We have a community member, Mr. Evans Kazoo covers himself as linked me a video to react to. And this is a fan dub of The Great Waterfall. If you don't know about The Great Waterfall, this is some important shit that you need to know for ReZero. ReZero's world is not a, a circular world. It is a flat world. And the edges are The Great Waterfall. The term you are from beyond the Great Waterfall literally means that you are an Isekai character because nobody knows what's beyond the Great Waterfall. It's said that Sekhmet, the Witch of Sloth, drove the Great Dragon beyond the Great Waterfall. And there's been some mentions around that, but like, you know, we've talked about some... What's the, what's the word? We talked about some interesting things about the Witch Cult translations, about does the Waterfall point upward, does it go down? I don't know, but hey, let's check this guy's video out. The following fandub canonically takes place during ReZero Season 1, Episode 12, yep. Return to the Capital, when Subaru is given a ride by Priscilla and Al to the ceremony of the Royal Selection. I still think that when Subaru called for taxi, remember that shit? He's literally outside the Royal Palace or whatever. And he's like, shit, Dragon Carriage, please. Priscilla immediately shows up. What the fuck is that all about? That cannot be just a coincidence. I refuse to believe that. Priscilla has told us that everything just works out in her favor. I'm going to assume some sort of divine protection or a blessing that created that opportunity just to happen. ...of the royal selection. Today's content is a conversation that was cut from the anime, but present in the light novel and manga, okay. and will likely be relevant in season three when it releases. Let's go. Please enjoy. Dub it, baby. Let's go. We're writing in this... The princess is the only person in the kingdom with a fashion sense like this. It's yeah, super right. fancy. Oh. <laughs> gonna write that? You've made me wait long enough. Your oh. insolence will cost you. Oh. I'm honored. Wait a minute. That's not his voice. I know he has, probably has a team of voice actors, but it, I thought that maybe he would voice Priscilla as well. Like, your insolence will cost you. You've made me wait long enough. Yeah. Your insolence will cost you. Uh-oh. I'm honored to have been invited. <sighs> I don't care. I only called you here for my own amusement. Hmm. By the way, peasant, peasant. Do you understand why this dragon carriage is heading to the castle? Nope. Uh. I hope that you weren't caught up by all the things right in front of your eyes. If so, then you're simply a fool. He is. I can't afford to keep such people in my dragon carriage. I'll cut you down right here. What? Right now. Answer. What? The, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Bitch, you fucking invite us into the carriage when we literally call for you show up. We show in and you're saying, I'm going to kill you? <laughs> you are the one that literally showed up and took me in. And now you're going to say, I can't afford to keep... What the fuck? Right here, right now. Answer carefully. Why is this dragon carriage heading to the castle? Royal selection. Hmm. This dragon carriage is heading to the castle to... Mm. Participate in the royal election. Yeah. You're one of the candidates to succeed the throne True. of the kingdom of Lagunica. True. <sighs> That's right. This person is one of the candidates to become the next king of Lagunica. Priscilla Barrio. Priscilla Barrio. It seems you were able to prevent yourself from being cut down. <sighs> I'm gonna leave myself. Would she have really cut us down there? If we guessed wrong after picking us up from the side? See, my interpretation of all of this events happening was Priscilla's divine protection or blessing that allows everything just to be to her favor, always advantageous, created an opportunity where Natsuki Subaru, Emilia's self-proclaimed knight, shows up alongside Priscilla. Suddenly, having someone from Emilia's side be right beside Priscilla's faction makes Emilia look bad. He's called an Appa carrier as well. It's a very interesting thing. Remember, the forbidden Appa theory also works really well in this scene as because Subaru is literally deemed the Appa carrier. If you know anything about the forbidden Appa theory, anytime you interact with an Appa, anytime you engage, like literally like go with it, bad shit happens. And you've seen the bad shit happen leading, you know, this shit. Oh. I imagined it was something like this. The prideful attitude of that woman, Priscilla. What convinced me was Amelia's reaction yesterday. It would make sense if Priscilla was one of Amelia's enemies. 
I don't know if they have ties together, but Priscilla calls Amelia half-wit. Priscilla is shown to favor beings with arrogance and pride and has the intellect to overwrite animalistic desires. Just like the pig's greed episode where she literally says, lick my foot and I'll save you. And we did, and she said, fuck you. You are literally just tarnishing the master-servant relationship of who you represent. This is worse than like a pig's greed or a dog's dependence. So she constantly like, she definitely does not like demi-humans at all. She hates this half-elf who she calls a half-wit. You already know who the person I was with yesterday is, right? Of course. She seemed to be hiding it with a miserable piece of cloth. That's right. And if you think about it, Amelia was wearing the robe where Roswell weaved it to make sure no one could really tell the identity, but seems like Priscilla could see beyond that. It suits her to hide herself on the edge of the street. It was quite the sight. Why you? There are some things that you should and shouldn't say. <laughs> Says you. It's the funniest shit. Cause like, Subaru is probably the biggest offender of this right now. There are some things that you should and shouldn't say. I know, you, sh you know this. <laughs> oh, uh, Al. Please bro. And boom, you see this shit? In the manga, they intentionally lift up this mantle, which conveniently hides his left arm. He doesn't have a left arm, by the way. A lot of anime only is myself included. Anytime Al was in frame, Priscilla was also there. And also Al's helmet and his poncho, I think does create a distraction where you're not really observant to his missing left limb. Al is a literal isekai character. These are not spoilers, this is cut content. Isekai character, a being from beyond the Great Waterfall. He is from the Valachian Empire as well. He lost his arm there, I think. His helmet hides the scars. He's horribly disfigured. Rem claims that witch's miasma is coming from the back of his helmet, which could imply that this helmet is also the meteor that the Valachian Empire found, which highlighted another witch's prominence, which made the Archbishop of Greed to show up and take down, right? There's a lot of Al shit that was never told in season one, which is so important. And the crazy shit of it all, the most insane thing, Al claims that he has amnesia, that he has episodic memory loss, meaning he could very well forget these events happening the very next day. My conspiracy theory is Al's lying about this. Al is lying about this amnesia to throw people off. I don't know why. Also, another interesting thing from the Witch Cult Translations web novel cut content. Al hates Ram. That's right. Our red hair beauty, Ram. Al despises Ram. This is also confirmed. <sighs> Please, brother. Don't make me have to spill your blood right after you avoided it the first time. <laughs> you're, you're pretty dexterous avoided for the only first having time. one arm. You could say that I've been able to survive longer with just a single arm. Besides... What? He was able to survive longer because of the single arm? For whatever reason, losing an arm is not a disadvantage to you, Al? Did you intentionally cut your arm off or something? What, 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 am I misinterpreting this? I'm the only person in this world that can understand your agony. Let's be on good terms with each other. I'm the only person in this world that can understand your agony would make sense if he's alluding to the fact that we're both Isekai characters, but also you wouldn't really truly understand his agony because you could never know about Return by Death. But the crazy shit is that there's a third Isekai character. And this is cut content in season one too. Hoshin of the Wilderness is a person that is another person beyond the Great Waterfall. Remember, Hoshin, Hoshin Private Army, Anastasia, Kararagi. Clearly, that is, you know, connections there. Huh? You were summoned too, right? Mm. To this world? Isekai character. I, I won't blame you if you don't believe me. I couldn't believe my ears yesterday either. It's been around, what? 18 years since I've heard words such as a red string of fade. That's right. The common phrase that was used in on Earth that Al used as a signal to deduce that Subaru is an isekai character. 18? Yeah. Was summoned here around 18 years ago. 
Al's pretty much his, in his 40s, right? I don't know when he got summoned, but I'm going to assume he got summoned when he was like also 18 or like 20-ish. I, I don't know. He's, he's like almost 40. Lost my arm around the same time. You could say a lot of stuff happened. And he was summoned here as in Valachia. He was not a resident of the Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica. It was Valachia Empire. Do you know why you were summoned? I haven't been actively pursuing the reason. I've been merely struggling to stay alive, after all. Got try just trying to survive. Mm. Don't make such irritating faces. It'll damage the integrity of my dragon carriage. You two clowns who claim to come from the place beyond the Great Waterfall, say something that would entertain me instead. I can return by death. The Great Waterfall? You don't know of it? Flat world. At the four corners- So, okay. This is now confirming that the waterfall goes downwards, at least based on this image. And I'm not sure if I can take it for face value because one of the craziest concepts, right? Let me cook. If the world of ReZero is like this, right? A flat world. We're supposed to believe that waterfalls exist going down around the edges like this, right? But I was like, Yo, what if it's like coming from above and you don't know exactly how like tall the waterfall is? Some other dudes are literally saying, what if the waterfall some one piece shit or it's like going upwards? And I'm going to blow your mind right now. Fuck it. There's another world down here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Cascading worlds based on these waterfall like ladders. Imagine that! I don't know, but it's, this shit's fucking bizarre, right? As of the world, the land cuts off and there exists a torrent of water that washes everything away. In other words, the Great Waterfall. Great Waterfall. There's sometimes are people that claim to be from a place beyond there. That's right, Hoshin of the Wilderness, Aldebaran, Subaru. They're generally just lies. However, Al is different. And so are you. Mm hmm What are you? What are you trying to do with me? Who's clearly one of your enemies? Didn't use I mention you. it already? It's just for my own amusement. <laughs> use you to humiliate Amelia soon. I could always keep you as a hostage, but it would be much more fun if I took you along to the royal election. That's all there is to it. As the Appa oh, boy. Princess, it's coming into view. The castle. Amelia. We've been waiting for you. For Marcos! Everyone else is already inside. Marcos Gigachad. <sighs> it's fitting. The reason I love Marcos so much is because he is not the standard Isekai Ikemen character, right? He's a rugged looking old dude, but he's like the Knight's Commander or some shit. Second strongest, I think, in the kingdom. Well, I don't know about that, but amongst the uh, Imperial Knights, which is most, more correctly, Royal Knights, right? Reinhardt's the strongest. Then my head cannon is Marcos, and then it's Julius. And I don't know where Wilhelm would fall in line, but I'm excluding Wilhelm from this power scaling. I'm always thinking Reinhard, Marcos, then Julius. <sighs> it's fitting for the peasants to be waiting for me. I see. Open the doors. At once. But who is this? Wait, Marcos doesn't question who this is? It's your apple vendor. Emilia. Uh oh. Subaru? Uh oh. We fucked up. <laughs> there it is. Here's the credits for all the people that voice acted. Hey, that was a great video, man. Thank you, Mr. Evans Kazoo Covers. Guys, here's the video. Go give it a like. Check his channel out, man. That was, a, that was a nice voiceover of the manga that covers some really, really important shit. And I already know of this because we've been reading ahead of the Witch Cult translation for the existing episodes of Cut Content. And these kind of revelations are insane, right? The fact that the world of ReZero is a flat earth with waterfalls at all of the edges. Beyond the Great Waterfall apparently lies the Great Dragon. But you could also assume Isekai characters to be from beyond the Great Waterfall. Could we then assume that the dragon itself is... <laughs>
An isekai character? Because the dragon is beyond the Great Waterfall? I don't know. I don't think the dragon is from there. I think that, you know... Wait a minute! Does that mean when the Witch of uh, Sloth segment sent the dragon beyond the Great Waterfall... And if we're supposed to assume beyond the Great Waterfall means an other world there, from the other world, does that mean Sekhmet literally sent the dragon to another world? You know what I mean? Beyond the Great Waterfall, not just a physical location, but the actual meaning of like, you know, Isekai characters are beyond the Great Waterfall, beyond, you know, another world. The dragon is from, I don't fucking know. I don't know. I need to know what's beyond the Waterfall, man. One day. 